Welcome back to another episode of Movies with Emotion podcast. Today I want to cover how I film my wedding ceremonies and the decisions I make on where I put my cameras. <laughs> Last episode, I covered why I go to rehearsal and why I go and scope out the day and figure out what I need to do on the wedding day itself. And one of the things that I do is establish where I need to put cameras and where I can put cameras. Every venue is different. Every venue is unique. Sometimes it's outdoors. Sometimes it's in a small church. Sometimes it's in a big church. It, it varies from wedding to wedding, and that's why I go to rehearsal. I want to use uh, an example of a wedding I did back in December of 2019. It was in a big church and it had a lot of different options as far as cameras and locations and a lot of logistics on how I needed to film it. So let's go ahead and jump onto the iPad and I'll show you, uh, kind of give you an overview of my thought process. And then I'll also show some footage of the actual wedding with those uh, camera angles of how they actually played out. So you can kind of get a feel for what I was thinking and what the end product looks like. Here we have a floor plan of the church, looking down from above, in case you're not familiar with that. As you can see, we have the congregation seating on either side. We have a middle aisle right down the middle, which is where the bride and groom will be walking. We also have two side aisles on either side of the sanctuary that are for the congregation to walk in and it also gives me some options as far as where to move. We also have a balcony option back here in the back. A lot of these older Catholic churches, uh, a lot of these have balconies in the back and they, they offer another location to put a camera. Generally, I'm shooting with three cameras. If I have a balcony option, then I'll put a fourth camera up. So. I can have up to four camera angles running, and that really helps to create a nice uh, wedding ceremony video that I can cut to different camera angles and cover up movement if I need to move my camera around, if I need to um, change my position at all, that I can cut to one of the other camera angles to cover that up and then come back to my camera once I've settled. So in this case, we have the bride and groom which were standing right up here at the altar. And we have the wedding party, bridesmaids down this way, groomsmen down this way. And in this case, we had the pastor down on the floor in front of the bride and groom. So I knew that was coming from rehearsal. So I knew that was gonna be an option, or I knew that was gonna be the case, I should say. So I knew I needed to compensate for that. So what I did is I set up a camera over on this side, shooting up at the bride. So that camera is shooting that direction at the bride's face. And then I also set up another camera on the opposite side that was shooting at the groom. And you can see that on the video footage that you're seeing right now. From the balcony, I also had the option of setting up a camera back here that would give me a nice overall view of the full church and the full sanctuary. It's a nice overall shot. It really helps to sell the space of where the wedding's being taken place. You can also get a good angle of the people and the guests that were there as well. And you can see that in here as well. The last camera that I have is my camera right in the middle aisle. And this is where I stand with my gimbal or monopod or whatever. I can take this camera, I can move backwards, I can move around this way if I need to, around that way if I need to. Whatever my options are, I can move these. All three of these other cameras are static cameras, which means they don't move. They're set up on tripods and they are set for a certain angle and that's where they stay. I can maneuver them around a little bit to compensate for other parts of the ceremony that might need to be picked up, but for the most part, they're static, which means they don't move. So as I'm moving this camera around, if I needed to back up, I can cut over to this camera angle and use that while I'm moving. Once I settle, then I can cut back to this camera angle and then pick up where I left off and it looks seamless and it works out so well and it just makes for a great wedding video. Back in the old days when you had your wedding video taped, it was essentially one camera angle up in the balcony, 
shooting this overall the entire time. You had a 15 to 30 minute ceremony that was nothing but this one angle and that can get boring really quick. Being able to cut between an angle like this and then fade over to an angle of the groom when he's doing his vows to be able to cut to an angle of the bride doing her vows just makes a huge difference and it makes makes the video so much more interesting to watch it it gives you all these different angles and looks like it was shot by a whole crew and it's just me. I have the capability of running all three of these cameras remotely through uh, my phone that's attached to this camera right here. So I have my camera on a gimbal on a monopod with my phone that is remotely connected to the other cameras and I can control when they're recording and what they're looking at as I'm walking around. I can also set this camera down on the floor and just kind of give it a, get an up view of the uh, pastor and the bride and groom and wedding party. As I'm doing that, I can walk around to this camera, make sure it's angled where it needs to be, come back around to this camera, make sure it's angled where it needs to be, it's capturing what it needs to, and then I can come back to this camera and work with it, no problem. So that is the reasoning of why I set my cameras up. This is also why, it just reiterates why I go to rehearsal the night before. All that information is taken care of at rehearsal and the day of the wedding, I know exactly where I need to be set up. I know exactly how I'm gonna capture everything and the day goes off without a hitch. Hopefully that gives you some insight as far as how I approach the wedding ceremony, how I approach where I put my cameras and how I approach how I capture your day. At the end of the day, I want your wedding video to be the best it can be. After the wedding's said and done and after everything's over, I want you to look back and think hiring me was one of the best decisions you could have made. Once everything is over and you can say that, then I've done my job and that is my ultimate goal. I work for you and with you all the way through the process. Anything that I can do to make it easier on you and on me and make sure I can capture your day to the best of my ability and give you a beautiful wedding film, that's what you're hiring me to do. So that's what I do. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me at Steve Weber at steveweberfilms.com. Ask me any questions. Ask me anything you'd like. I'm always happy to answer questions from anybody. Until next time, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will talk to you later. See ya.